Uh, we are the last stage of the PhD uh, exam of Elke uh, Smirnov. So you know the PhD how it works in, uh, in Lausanne, Switzerland. You arrive first and you have uh, one year where you follow courses, take credit, and you have a first year exam. So you pass that. Then afterwards, you have uh, two years, basically, where you work hard, publish papers, uh, take credits, and uh, pass the exam. So we passed the uh, exam. We had the two external examiners from the UK, uh, Professor Edel from Imperial College and Professor Grant from uh, Manchester University. So that was fine. But now it's a final exam, because you have to explain in uh, simple words what you've been doing in three years, like that I can finally understand what you've been doing. <laughs> and of course, we will have questions, and you will only get the degree if you can answer all the questions of the audience. So, Anthony, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so, today uh, I will present you my four, year, uh, four years of work on assemblies of both of the particles at liquid-liquid interfaces. And uh, as Hubert said, I will try to, to make this a bit vulgar way, a bit simplified, uh, for you to understand that. So I will start with an overview of what liquid-liquid interfaces are and uh, what are plasmonic particles. And then, Mainly my presentation will be devoted to self-assembly because it's the most, let's say, um, the most nice part, I think, about my PhD that I can explain because the, the, the next part that also takes a couple of chapters, it's uh, rather hard to, to explain in simple form. But I will try. And then I will stop shortly on perspectives and conclusions and uh, maybe some questions for me. So, when we, we we are talking and we are thinking about the liquid liquid interfaces, most of the people think about like water oil emulsion. But uh, also liquid liquid interfaces is a part of our life because everything that surrounds you is uh, interfaces and our body is also interfaces. And those interfaces called a cell membrane. And those cell membrane consists of two, let's say, water, oil, water layers. So to liquid-liquid interfaces. Oops. Okay. And uh, the thickness of this uh, interface is usually less than 10, <coughs> 10 angstrom, so now one nanometer is a very, very uh, short distance. So, for example, it's uh, thinner, uh, one, 100,000 100, times thinner than uh, my hair. And uh, why liquid liquid interfaces are so special? Because they provide, as well as the liquid air interfaces, they provide a defect free platform to assemble particles to, um, uh, in, 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 in contrast to uh, heterogeneously, uh, heterogene energetically heterogeneous liquid solid uh, interfaces. Also, they have uh, self healing nature. Uh, high transparency that is uh, very nice for optical applications. Uh, some mechanical flexibility, so we can bend, we can distort them, and uh, they still uh, keep in uh, continuity. And uh, those interfaces was uh, shown to, to, to be useful for uh, self assembly first type of uh, uh, particles nano-objects, molecules, and so on. And the uh, take-home message uh, for my presentation today is that uh, liquid-liquid interface is almost the perfect uh, system to make study and uh, to manipulate with nanoparticles assembly. Uh, now I shall introduce you uh, shortly to plasmonic nanoparticles. Uh, if we consider uh, metal nanoparticles, electrons and metal are very weakly bound to the atoms, and those Electrons can be displaced in this external electric or magnetic field and uh, form a uh, uh, kind of like dipole. And this dipole uh, is an oscillating di dipole uh, and it has its own uh, resonance frequency. And uh, this resonance frequency we observe as an abnormal absorption uh, in a special wavelength. And uh, this property of uh, nanoparticles 
is size dependent, so as the smaller particles, the, the ready, uh, more red it is, uh, the bigger particles, the more blue. Uh, <coughs> how to obtain such nano particles? This is very, very common and very cheap and uh, easy process. So we take uh, uh, this acid, uh, mix it with a uh, uh, sodium citrate, we heat it up, and uh, we obtain, uh, uh, instead of uh, orange solutions, we obtain, or yellowish, we obtain red nanoparticles. So here there are initial state and the final state, and this uh, picture of uh, nanoparticles. So now going uh, deeper into my work, uh, the self assembly. The main motivation for, for this uh, set of projects was uh, smart mirrors and uh, filters that people typically interface. Uh, as I said, uh, gold nanoparticles has some uh, have some electrons, and those electrons uh, also uh, possessing some charge. So nanoparticles are charged. And uh, in electric field, uh, those nanoparticles can move uh, from uh, one electrode to another and, for example, assemble a liquid-liquid interface. Uh, this was a very nice idea. Uh, another nice idea was that assembled, already assembled nanoparticles can be driven by magnetic filter, so we could create a mirror with a or filter with a change in uh, geometry. So very useful, for example, for physicists, for uh, people who are working with lasers and for telescopes and so on, astronomers. However, there are several problems uh, with those with that process. Uh, for example, uh, relatively high potential very separates interface uh, from the bulk, and nanoparticles cannot cross it uh, as uh, as a uh, you, you can say, uh, and the, uh, the, the following one, uh, the obtained film are usually brittle and form cracks very easily, so they are not suitable, for example, for optics. Uh, as well, some methods that were suggested by uh, uh, by date uh, require some expensive uh, and time-consuming functionalization of nanoparticles. However, we uh, uh, created, we developed another method that uh, uh, utilizes uh, property of a special molecule that calls the TTF. So this molecule contains phosphor. Uh, this phosphor attaches to gold nanoparticles uh, and uh, helps promotes uh, self-assembly process. How we did that? We simply uh, prepared a solution of uh, TTF in uh, special organic uh, solvent, uh, DC, fluorescent, and add uh, water-soluble uh, gold nanoparticles. Then we simply mix them together rigorously and obtain uh, such fields. And uh, the property, one interesting property of uh, TTF molecule I should mention here that uh, Usually, natural molecule is mainly soluble in organic solvent, but charged molecule sol uh, soluble both in organic and aqueous phase. And this is kind of like um, this property helps us to reach uh, the result. So now I shall uh, show you a small video uh, how this process happens in the reality. So we speed it up for, for times, but the whole process takes I don't know. Two, three, four minutes. Uh, this is DCE, so organic phase uh, with a, a special molecule TTF, and then I put uh, gold nanoparticles. Afterwards, I shake them, uh, and you can see that uh, some nanoparticles already transferred. Uh, so I shake it again, and now all nanoparticles will be transferred. I can uh, remove the aqua space, so it's completely transparent. And I can remove this aqua space uh, to add more and more and more and more in, in such way forms uh, multi-layer films and so on and so on. So it's a uh, very, very funny and uh, very interesting process. And uh, afterwards, uh, I would like to show you a couple of interesting properties why these uh, films are so special.
okay, you see that the second portion of the film is the And this film behaves like, like liquid, liquid gold, except the, the melt of temperature. Uh, this the, the one of special properties that nanoparticles are sticking together, so you can see here, for example, uh, small uh, wrinkles that forms on the surface of the liquid. And if you just think about them, like, can you imagine, for example, a wall made of bricks that you can wrinkle uh, like in kilometers. So one brick is 10 centimeters, but you can wrinkle it in kilometers and it, it doesn't break apart. <laughs> yeah, this one is a 20 centimeter, oops. That one, that one, that one, 20 centimeters um, uh, gold mirror that we crafted for Geneva uh, sign the scientific event, uh, uh, the sand. Okay, now about uh, the mechanism. Yeah. Uh, I go <laughs> okay, yeah, you can see that it's kind of like complicated, but uh, I will see this slide. If you want, you can go in the video about that. And I will, I will try to explain it again about uh, the story about bricks. So if you imagine one nanoparticle as a brick, uh, if we try to assemble them without any, let's say, cement or any glue, we will finish with something like that. In, in the reality, it looks like a black precipitate at the bottom of the flask. But if we add some glue, if we add some you know, sticky part that can work as a, in a leg of brick manner, we create a kind of like wall made of bricks. Uh, again, summarizing, uh, we could do uh, arbitrary surface coverage, it means we know uh, what is surface coverage, it's uh, monolayer, half monolayer, multi layers, uh, and we could do it uh, uh, continuously. Then we know uh, by investigation with UV spectroscopy that we remove nanoparticles completely from aqua space. That means that we know amount of nanoparticles, number of nanoparticles that settles at the interface, and we know the coverage. Uh, another one, uh, very important part, that this process is a general one. So we tested it with more than 10 different solvents, and it, it works more or less uh, for all of them. And again, about uh, some words about uh, Particles connectivity and uh, mechanical stability of the film, so they do not form cracks as previous uh, as previously published uh, rules. So I use these two properties to study optical uh, uh, optical properties of um, uh, my assemblies, and uh, again I need to, to to make some introduction to that topic. If we consider anybody uh, any. Uh, uh, and uh, shine the light uh, on this body. Uh, there are several pro processes that can happen. The first one is absorbent, so uh, something will absorb light. Another one is a scattering. So normally every everything that you see scatter, uh, can scatter light. Uh, if you have a look into mirror, uh, you will see yourself. So this this kind of like special scattering process that called refraction. And uh, another stuff is uh, extinction, so it's uh, simply uh, sum of uh, absorbent and scattering. And what we've done, we put uh, uh, our cell with uh, uh, gold uh, nanofilm um, uh, in front of a special uh, optical device that called integration sphere. And we measure it in two modes. In mode uh, the, where we measure extinction and in mode where we measure sc uh, scattered or reflected line. And uh, normally we obtain such pictures. Uh, but uh, more interesting question uh, was how optical properties uh, correlate with the gold nanoparticles contain, content. Because our uh, our mind and our think, uh, thinking uh, give us some clue that if we add more nanoparticles, uh, we will have higher effects. Uh, 
still, let's say, some separation that corresponds to uh, Polish and Gold Amir. However, it's not, uh, it's not like that. If we plot it uh, in the different scales, so here is a maximal reflectance versus coverage, uh, we, will, we, will, we will clearly see that uh, in, the first, uh, uh, in the first region, it follows a uh, linear line as uh, our uh, mind uh, does, but then it, it goes down, and going down relates to morphological properties of the film, so it simply forms some um, uh, uh, wrinkles, uh, buckling, and so on of the interface that uh, uh, that doesn't allow to reach uh, higher values. And uh, here, for example, you can also see some images uh, showing uh, uh, the uh, change changes of uh, the uh, the reflection from the thing. So the same was uh, done for small particles. For small particles, it's more or less the same, but, uh, but without uh, strong uh, reflection. Uh, so th those uh, two correspond to different application area. Uh, one is mirror, and not one is picture. Uh, and um, yeah, and uh, here it's uh, highlighted. So for filters, we put the stop from about 90% of light. Uh, uh, just for, for a single uh, uh, layer. So we consider it uh, if we, you know, we are scientists to like the different diagrams, like you know, uh, plus, minus, high, low, and so on and so on. So we consider this part uh, without uh, uh, without TK molecules we. Uh, haven't observed any self-assembly with uh, TK molecules. We observe self-assembly into reflected uh, films, into reflective surfaces. But if we go from high um, interfacial tension uh, solvents as a DC water to, uh, for example, polypropylene carbonate water, uh, we showed something different. So um, without TTF, we put a sample nanoparticle, and if we add TTF, because it changes a bit. Um, wetting properties, uh, not a part of simply transfer to oil phase and stay in oil phase. And this one, uh, this one looked very nice because without TTF we could do uh, very large scale self-assembly, it could be square meters. Uh, with TTF we could simply concentrate nanoparticles into oil phase without aggregation and use it for example in uh, printing, uh, in inkjet printing. And now I will very shortly pass through the um, electrochemical part of my thesis. As I said, uh, we are all consisted of interfaces, and uh, if if we take one part of one half of the cell membrane, uh, and uh, we wanted to, uh, we would like to uh, study some properties of uh, electrochemical properties of this interface. We will we will finish with. Uh, uh, such kind of like cell, electrochemical cell, uh, which consists of two compartments, aqueous uh, phase and oil phase, but with uh, supporting electrolytes uh, to provide some current. Uh, for aqueous phase, we use the normally lithium chloride, uh, regular salt. Uh, and uh, for organic phase, we use the special molecules that uh, can help us uh, to provide current across the uh, to provide plants from uh, organic thing. And you know, on, on this image you can see typical uh, cyclical tomograms and uh, any peak uh, or any increase of current corresponds to a transfer of charge. It could be ions, it could be electrons, it could be any kind of charge. Yeah, and uh, we have such nice equations that I showed uh, here please. just scary. Uh, so the question was uh, for that part of my work. The question, the main question was how to transfer such film into uh, from our system that, that we can, uh, prepare as a shaking into electrochemical cell without contamination and so on. Uh, and this is very important if we want to go further to drug delivery system, some special catalysis and so on to to know 
and to characterize correctly our system. However, so there are several uh, problems. Uh, for example, uh, all previous methods uh, significantly contaminate both phases, either with methanol or ethanol, either with nanoparticles. Uh, and uh, to prevent that, uh, we invented uh, another method uh, to deliver directly to the interface uh, concentrated solution of nanoparticles with capillary. And this allows us to, to create film on almost any interface, curved, flat, doesn't matter. Uh, we used the uh, uh, concentrated solution means that the amount of uh, contaminants uh, low uh, and uh, we can avoid uh, or prevent the pollution of electrochemical cell. However, the uniform, uniform coverage was fixed and only half monolayer. This is kind of like limitation of the of the method. Uh, firstly, we studied <coughs> uh, some uh, standard ions, standard molecules, uh, to characterize our field. And uh, the idea was that we transfer a TMA uh, plus ions from one place to another. And uh, we showed uh, that there is no uh, significant uh, effect uh, from nanoparticles, nanoparticle film to this uh, transfer. So, uh, nanoparticle film is uh, completely transparent for uh, ion transfer, it doesn't take part in, 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 in that process. And uh, also, there is low capacitive current, so previously, uh, this current in the middle where there is no transfer. No, for ions or any charges, this current was uh, really high, but we managed to reduce it to very low values, so now we could see any uh, charge transfer, tra tra transfer event across the interface. Uh, <coughs> so the first, uh, what we would like to, to try was um, uh, TTF and uh, other electron donor molecules, because as I said uh, maybe before, uh, that uh, we had no clue how TTF uh, worked. Uh, in, uh, so we, we had some assumptions. We had some assumptions that TTF should be oxidized and should form TTF plus, but we didn't confirm it. And this method allows us to confirm that TTF, uh, after addition of the film, TTF uh, plus was formed in a very very short, uh, very small region close to the interface and then transfer from one to another, uh, from one phase to another one. And uh, just to prove that it's uh, not uh, kind of like active part or some special interaction between nanoparticles uh, and TTF, we did the same with uh, completely different uh, electron donor molecules such as FERSEM, but it has more or less the same uh, redox potential. And we observed similar effects of increase of uh, uh, current uh, in this region that responds to transfer of ion, uh, of uracenium ion. And how we utilize that? Uh, we utilize that uh, for uh, oxygen reduction reaction at uh, uh, gold nanoparticles. So we, in the previous uh, slide, we uh, saw that nanoparticles could be charged on the, if, if we put uh, some electron donors uh, in one phase, and uh, now I would like to show how they could be dis discharged on in, in, into another phase. So nanoparticles uh, are working as a um, short uh, cards for electrons that can jump from one phase to another one. And uh, we, we, we change it to decommitted for a sense, very strong uh, uh, electron uh, donor. Uh, and simply what we saw in aerobic condition, a huge ongoing wave uh, that could be correspond to electrocatalysis. And how we proved that it's indeed a reduction of oxygen. Uh, we firstly we performed the, uh, the same experiment in aerobic conditions, uh, where we could see that there is no uh, such a huge wave, and everything finishes with um, uh, with transfer of sporting electrolyte. The and then we did a shake and fast experiment, where we tried to analyze um, quantity uh, quantitatively. Uh, obtained the DMFC plus and uh, peroxide. So now I, I hope it's the last scheme. Uh, how, it, uh, how it works? Uh, we have gold nanoparticles uh, energy level somewhere here. And then we simply charge it. 
so then we need to add some energy by polarizing the interface. And then electrons go to another phase to perform reaction with oxygen to peroxide or something like that. And this is a very nice um, uh, route and the way uh, how those films could be utilized so you can create a small micro reactor and perform all reactions in such kind of like micro reactor that's surrounded by gold compound. Yeah, and uh, yeah, just to be clear that we got some. Uh, Something about like, yield for peroxide, like 22 percent. Because another problem was uh, water. We can distinguish between uh, water from the flash and water from, the, from our experiment. Okay. So now, just two simple words about what we could do else uh, with uh, such films. Uh, we could do uh, colloidosomes. So what does it mean? Uh, it those. Uh, micro or nano raspberry stuff so it's kind of like a small micro uh, micrometer size organic apartment surrounded by uh, gold metal film again coming back to micro reactors that I mentioned before uh, we could do large liquid mirrors we could do stairs and electrochemical sets uh, we could do self terminated welding this is a very nice uh, uh, stuff because, for example, uh, melting point of gold is about uh, 1,000 degree, but here we could decrease it to 300 due to this nanostate of nanoparticles. And if if we could manage to place everything in a special uh, order, uh, we could do, for example, conductive pods and so on for your next generation of your iPhones and so on. Uh, and uh, another one, um, because in the beginning uh, it's a Maragoni shutters, but I just show you how it works. Uh, so on the interface we have pre-aggregated nanoparticles. And uh, now we apply an uh, electric field, uh, like uh, in a cyclic thermogram, so we're scanning in one and another direction. And you can see that uh, uh, this uh, dot will be bright and then lower. So we could do indeed uh, the, we could reach some some effect of this uh, you know, on of uh, uh, on of mirrors or let's say sh not mirrors because mirrors is kind of like in vertical direction but shutter. So nanoparticles could move at least uh, at the interface from one uh, one side to another one and. Uh, and uh, we could change uh, reflectance from the interface. So, uh, general conclusions uh, and uh, your questions. We developed a new method of golden uh, particle self assembly. Uh, we studied optical properties uh, and uh, we um, developed uh, another interesting method uh, uh, to settle nanoparticles inside of electrochemical cell uh, to form the same kind of like system, the same kind of like lustrous uh, nanofilm. And we showed that uh, nanoparticles film is transparent for ion transfer and it takes part in uh, electric, uh, electric uh, catalysis uh, as a, um, uh, let's say, uh, electrical connection between two phases. So, yeah, sounds like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. So let me tell you something uh, about FK. First of all, today is a sad day because it's our last Russian student in Lepa. Uh, we have a very good uh, series of uh, Russian students. The first one was Dmitry Momotenko. As it happened, Dmitry Momotenko had a friend called Natalia Gazilova. So Natalia Gazilova joined the Lepa. Natalia Gazilova had a friend called Alexandra Bondarenko. So Alexandra Bondarenko joined the Lepa. And Alexandra Bondarenko told me, I've got a little friends that I met in Moscow University. And Kenny Smirnov. So here came Kenny Smirnov. 
I'm just fortunately as Lydia has no friends. I'm sure they would. Of course, Elena came uh, from St. Petersburg uh, independently out of the chain. But uh, so far, the moment you are the last of the uh, Russian uh, time, it was really a pleasure to have Russian students in the lab. You guys bring uh, a lot of energy to the lab. So you are uh, thesis number uh, 59 of, of the NEPA. You might be uh, almost, almost, almost presented almost. Yeah, you were presented for the prize of the best thesis uh, last year. One of the first diplomas signed by Martin Lettoli, yeah. the new president. So. Uh, you met in Kolmogorov, yeah? So you did chemistry, no biology? No, we both did chemistry. In the no, 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 you did material science. It's written uh, here. In university, yeah. I did chemistry. So. Yeah. So you, you separated after the high school, yeah? Yeah. She went to chemistry and you went to material science. So he has a bachelor degree from the Department of Material Science from Lemonosov University, which is the best university in Russia. Is that true, Elena? <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Don't get me started. Uh, after that, he took a gap year, and then he changed subject for his master because uh, you have a master in chemistry, but from the material science department. Something I never understood. <laughs> anyway, I would like to now uh, to vote uh, because let me see. Let me tell you how he introduced himself when he wrote to me back in 2000. Uh, oh. He said, I am self-motivated. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. I am responsible. Yes. I am attentive. Uh, okay. Control. Control. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hardworking. Yeah, sure. Uh, you said hardworking? Oh, sorry. Yes. Strong analytical skills. Always. Effective communicator, eager yes. to experience and learn new skills. That was, I mean, when you receive CV as a prof, you know, and you see how people describe themselves, you can <laughs> read between the lines. <laughs> but anyway, it was a pleasure uh, to receive you in our lab. You did a great job. And on top of that, we should all be grateful to Evgeny, because since we moved to Sion, he's in charge of the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> we know that we can survive in Sion. So, not, not that coffee shop that you're thinking about, okay? <laughs> <laughs> not that <next. laughs> So, in the name of the president of EPFL, uh, Mr. Uh, Martin Vettori, it is my greatest pleasure to award you this doctorate degree from Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne. Perfect. <laughs> yeah!